today we're going to go a little more in detail about a tape measure. Now I made a couple videos that were short, but they, they got covered a couple basics on the tape measure. And now I'd like to spend a little more time talking about some more details. Now, like I mentioned in the other videos, the tape measures come in five basic sizes. You have a 16, 25, 30, 35, and 40. Now maybe other sizes, but those are the most standard. 35 and 40 foot tape measures are very heavy. You could carry a 35 and a 40, but how many times during the day are you measuring that? I would say that's more for specific use cases. I prefer to carry a 25. Now this particular one I'm showing you is a 16 foot tape. It is a Stanley Fat Max. I'm not saying that Stanley Fat Max is the best or the worst, but I would say 90% of our guys, including me all the time, have always bought these. I, I love this tape measure. I believe the reason it's called a Stanley Fat Max is because the blade is so fat. And it wasn't always like this. Older tape measures had a thinner blade, which reduced the break point. Break point is really important. That is how far you can push out a tape before it snaps. Now, when I say snaps, it's usually gonna snap at the shear line between the tape and the unit itself. Now, this one claims they have an 11 foot break point, which I have tested and it's pretty much there, maybe a couple inches less. At 11 feet, the break point is gonna be where my hand is. So I could probably stretch my hands an extra four feet, which means I could increase this tape all the way up to a 16 foot break point, which is important when you are by yourself, perhaps you're on a ladder and you need to measure around the corner of a wall. You want to be able to extend this to go measure around that wall. You may not have anybody to help you. Or even on construction sites, when you have two people on two different ladders, one here and one here, they're going to want the person to fish the tape measure. They're not going to want to walk down the ladder, grab it and bring it over. You want to be able to extend it. So having a long break point is very important. Okay, let's talk about what I just did right there. See how I snapped that? Now, when you hold a tape measure, usually you hold with your index finger underneath. This is how you usually do it. You could brace it every time, and then you let go of your index finger and snap it. Now, every time I snap it, which is unavoidable, I mean, you could fish it back really slow and, and work it, but most likely you will not do that on a job site because you're trying to get the job done. What happens every time you snap it is you are slamming this latch, and the latches can take a beating. Tape measures take a beating. But over time, the more you do that, your latch is gonna to start to shift about a 16th of an inch. I've seen an eighth of an inch. If you have that happen in an eighth of an inch, just throw that tape measure out. 16th, you can definitely work with. You just have to be aware that it, that is happening. Now this particular one has three rivets, which is good because a lot of older tapes had one or two and they would start to bend the spring steel really fast. But these can hold up for a while, but eventually every tape measure is going to shift a little bit. So. When I was saying about why that is just something you need to keep in mind, let's say I was to measure this piece of wood. When I measure this, I am pulling now, which means I'm at a measurement of 17 and 7 eighths. But if I were to hold this and push measure, I'm at 17 and 7 eighths heavy. Okay, so I don't really know whether this is 17 and 7 eighths or 17 and 7 eighths heavy. I don't know what the true measurement is. I'd have to get a hard ruler on here to actually test it. But really, I don't need to care as long as I'm aware that I am shifting it by a sixteenth of an inch. So let's say, for example, there's a knot right here and I want to glue this piece of wood. I want to cut this piece of wood and glue it onto this table right to this knot. If I were to measure this, I'm going to pull on the side of the desk here and I'm looking at 10 and 7 eighths. All that matters is that when I go to cut this wood, I remember that I did a pull measurement. So I will pull also measure to 10 and 7 eighths. But let's say that I was measuring something like a wall, 90 degree wall is doing some baseboard. Most likely I'd end up pushing the tape measure. Okay, and let's say it's, I don't know, this is one foot, but let's say it's a lot longer. The reason I'm saying it's a lot longer because if it was truly one foot, I could just hold it here, push it and then measure it, right? But let's say it was a really big piece of baseboard and I can't get down there to hold it. I need to pull. So all that matters is that when I do pull and I measure, let's say it's three feet, instead of measuring three feet, I can measure three feet light. Okay. And that would be the same as if I was down there or had somebody actually holding the, um, the tape. Let's talk about what I just said, light. So now there's 16 sixteenths in an inch. The halfway point would be eight sixteenths. Quarter would be four sixteenths. Usually on a construction site, you wouldn't say a 16th of an inch or 12 16ths. People don't want to hear that. What they want to hear is eighth inch, quarter, three eighths, half inch, five eighths, 
three quarters, seven eighths, or an inch. Those are your standard measurements. So you, you would shout those out or you would remember those, you go by eighth inch marks. Going back to what I was saying earlier, if you're in a situation where let's say it's, th let's say it's half an inch, whatever you're measuring is half an inch, except that it's a little light, it's a, it's a line light, like a 16 light, what you would say is half inch light or a half inch heavy depending if it's over or under by a 16th. That's what I grew up saying. There are, are other ways to say it, but usually you would say that. I wanna say nine sixteenths, I would say, I would say a half inch heavy in this case. This is an imperial tape measure, right? So we use the imperial system here, feet, inches, pounds, but they do make metric tape measures also. But you can also buy standard uh, US based imperial tape measures that have a metric system on the bottom and, and a centimeters, maybe on the top or bottom. Maybe it'll go for a couple inches or a foot, which could be useful as well. This particular one only goes by inches. It doesn't have anything else. I would also like to talk about how to hold and use a tape measure. And I mentioned before that you, when you have a tape measure out, you hold it with your index finger. This is very standard, it's quick. It allows me to lock it and then let go. You don't need to push the latch every time you're doing it. That's too slow. So when you're on a site, you're measuring something, you want to be able to pull it quick, hold it, and then let go. Let's talk about one other thing I see a lot of uh, beginners doing when they're measuring something, they will put it, let's say, on the floor, and they will hold it, and they will pull their tape measure up like this, which could be useful if the thing was right here, but let's say it's a little higher, it gets a little awkward, right? So the way that you do it is you would bend your tape, place it on the floor here. Let's say I want to measure the ceiling, which is about eight feet. I grab it here, pull down, Grab, pull down, grab, pull down, grab, pull down. You'll see any professional carpenter do it just like this. And even though I have 11 feet and I just told you my ceiling's eight feet, it gives me good flex to move this up and down. Okay, so I think I covered most of the basics on how to use a tape measure. There are probably a bunch of little things that I forgot. For example, look at the design of this. It's a rubber sole with ridges here. I don't think that's an accident that they designed it like that. I actually find it very useful when I place it on a surface. It will hold itself pretty well. Not perfectly, it could inch forward, but it will aid in you measuring by yourself. So if I forgot anything, please feel free to add to the comments or teach me something. I love learning. That's why we're here. We're here to learn every single day. Please subscribe and I'll see you at the next video.